Okay, so you took your fireworks images and now you have to edit them. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. Stick around. Okay, so let's get into the computer here. I'm going to take you through two images, uh, one with projections and one without. And I'm going to be comparing the before and after. I'm going to show you the tools to quickly edit them. And um, the, you can get more involved. And with any kind of editing, it becomes a artistic, creative thing. So you may find there's a different tool in Lightroom that does something that you want it to do. This is just like a baseline for you to quickly you know, just see how I would edit a fireworks image quickly. Now I may go a little further in my own editing where I would might, you know, tweak little things here and there, but this is pretty much how I do it and how quickly I can do it. Okay, so let's get into the computer. So I'm in Lightroom's develop module and this is gonna be a quick edit. And you know, the images look pretty spectacular when they're done, but they usually all start like this, which is not very impressive. So when you're actually photographing fireworks, what you want to make sure you're doing is not overexposing the actual fireworks themselves. Now the rest of this image is very dark, but with today's DSLRs, you can bring back a lot of the detail in these darker parts, but it's hard to recover the highlights if you overexpose them. So if you look at my histogram, you can see it's a very dark image and it's really not overexposed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the basic panel and with one slider, watch what happens to this image and now we brought it to life. So all I did was raise the exposure. Once I do that, I want to now take down the highlights. If you look up here in the histogram, you can see it's overexposed. And when I hover over the triangle here in the top right corner, you can see the red lines showing me the overexposed portions of the image. So I'm gonna take the highlight slider, pull that one down. All right, right about there looks good. Now I can brighten up the darker parts even more by opening up the shadows in here. Now when you open up the shadows in a dark part of an image you're introducing noise to it. Now this was shot at ISO 100 um, it was at 32 millimeters f9 and it was a 17 second exposure. So this should be a very clean image and when we zoom in you can see that it is. It's really there's not a lot of noise in it. And you can see all the detail is all in here. It was just hiding in the darkness. Okay, so what I would do with this image, I'm going to just take you through my process quickly. I'm pretty happy with the exposure here. So now, as you can see, the buildings are falling away. They're actually falling towards the castle. And that's okay. If you like the way that looks, you don't have to correct that. But inside of Lightroom, when you come down to the transform panel, this is super easy to correct. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. If I just click Auto, Lightroom will do it for me. And now you can see all the lines are square, everything looks great, but I lost the bottom portion of the image. So by hitting Control-Z, I'm going to go back and undo that adjustment. What I prefer to do is just take the vertical slider and do it manually until I get the image where I want it. So to me, that looks just about right, right about there. Now you can do constraint crop here and it'll pull it in or you can open up the crop tool and you can do it manually. So let's say you want this to be a certain aspect ratio. You can pull it into wherever you want. Let's say it's going on Instagram. You want to make it square. So you can open up over here and I'm going to do one to one. So that's square, but I don't want to lose too much of the bottom of my image. I can do that with it. I'm actually going to make this a 16 by 9 though, so you can see some of the larger parts of the image that I'm going to be working on. So let's pull this down, open it up. All right, so that's, a, that's about a 16 by 9, and now I'm going to click Done. Okay, so this is the image. It looks pretty good, just like this, but there's a few things that you can do to finish it off and make it look really nice. And I'm going to go into the local adjustment tools here to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on some clarity. Now with fireworks, this is something I do with every single image. And what this will do is it's going to give the fireworks themselves definition. So I'm going to click on it and now I'm going to paint over it. And as you can see that happening, it's brightening them up. Everything's getting a little bit brighter. I'm going to paint it over the buildings. 
on the crowd down here. And everything just kind of comes to life a little bit. And then now once that adjustment's there, if I click the O key, it'll show me where my adjustment is. Now I've painted all over the place here. Now if I wanted to remove some of this, I can click the Alt key and now I can remove my adjustment. So I could take it off where I don't want it. Sometimes when you use some of these local adjustments and you apply them in an area where you don't want them, they can affect the image and you can get halos and just get some weird things happening around the edges of things. Now you, this is a pretty, you know, rough edit here. But if we click on that, I always make sure I check the image to make sure that nothing looks a little weird around the edges. So as you can see, now this image is a little bit overexposed. So there's a couple of things I can do. I have that adjustment here. So what I can do is I can pull the clarity down a little bit if I want. I can push it up more if I want to. I can pull the highlights down here inside that adjustment. So I can adjust it here. I could leave it the way it is, close this out, and go back into the basic panel. And I can pull these highlights down a little bit more to adjust the histogram. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm looking right next to the castle on either side. To me it's a little bit dark down here. So I can come in here with my adjustment brush again. I can raise my exposure a little bit. If you roll the wheel on your mouse, it'll adjust the size of the adjustment brush. Open up the shadows a little bit down there. And it's brightening it up just a little bit. Now there's one other thing I like to do to my images, and I do it to most of them, especially when there's buildings in it. So I come down here to the detail panel. Now this is where you would take care of sharpening and noise reduction. Now this was shot at ISO 100, there is no noise. So I don't have to worry about that for this image. But I definitely want to sharpen this image up. So what I'm going to do is if, if you click into this little preview window, it'll unzoom and then you can move your hand to what you want the preview window to zoom in on. So I just want to look at the actual castle. So I'm going to look at that and now I'm going to come down here and go to masking. I'm going to push down the alt key, slide the masking slider over and that's going to show me the tool overlay. So the parts that are white are where the sharpening is going to be applied. I don't want it on the flat portions of the image of the image. I don't want it in the sky. I just want it around the edges of things. Now if I left this all the way down, it's going to apply sharpening to the entire image. Everywhere that's white is going to get sharpening. So I want to move this over. Okay. So now I'm going to move the slider over. And it's a subtle difference. But if I zoom in close here, I mean, you can see how sharp this image is. And with sharpening, you have to be careful that you don't overdo it because the edges of your image can start to look weird. Just the edges can look a little strange, but I'm liking the way this looks right here. So this is how I would do a fireworks image. Now, it really didn't take that long. If I was doing this without explaining it all, I could do this in a minute or two. It's not that hard. So I'm, I took another image, and we're going to work on this one here. Well, here's a before and after also. If you click the Y key, it'll show you the before and after. That's a huge difference. And as long as the information was captured correctly in the camera, and you shoot in RAW mode, which is probably the most important thing, make sure your camera is in RAW quality, not JPEG. That's going to give you the most information to work with. This is what you can do with these images. Now we're going to jump over to this image. Now this is from Happily Ever After. I shot this in May of 2017. This was the first time I had seen the show. So for this one I shot it at 21 millimeters f9 and this particular exposure is 19 seconds. We're gonna come back to the basic panel and now again I'm gonna start with the exposure and already I'm way overexposed. So on this image I can't go as crazy as I did on that first one. So I'm, I'm going to try to get the exposure on the castle and the fireworks right. Now I'm going to go and use my gradient filter. If 
for this one. If I hold down the shift key, it'll pull a nice straight gradient from the bottom. So with this, I'm actually going to raise the exposure just on the crowd in front. And I'm actually going to pull the highlights down. Now with the exposure up, I can also apply other adjustments here. It's the same thing as the adjustment brush. All of the, ex the um, adjustments you have in the basic panel are here also. So I always like to add clarity to an image. Now this one, I would probably paint it on. So, but I could do it here also. So if I wanted to do it here, you notice there's a little more definition down in the crowd. But I don't want to use a gradient for that. I actually want it on the fireworks. So I'm going to just click off done here. I'm going to open up my adjustment brush. And I'm going to, if you double click on the effect button, it'll zero out all your sliders. So now I just want clarity. And I'm going to apply it around the image. So you see how that just kind of brings everything to life? Kind of makes everything pop. Now, this one's overexposed if you look at the histogram. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to come back into my basic panel here. And I haven't really done much as far as adjustments here. The only thing I really did was, you know, just add exposure and I pulled down the highlights a little bit. So there's two ways to control the highlights. I can bring down the white slider. If you notice in the histogram, it didn't really take care of the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the highlights and we're going to pull it down here. So it, you don't, you can make it to your liking. These are fireworks. They're supposed to be bright. Sometimes when you pull down the highlights too much, it doesn't look real. It doesn't look right. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now I have a lot of dead space up here in the sky. So I'm just going to crop it. With this one, I'm not going to adjust the perspective because even though the castle's falling away a little bit, I'm okay with that. You know, it's the artistic preference. So with this image, you can do a few different things. You know, what's great about shooting with a DSLR that has a lot of megapixels in it, it gives me a lot of room to be creative with my crops. Now, if I want to, I can leave this wide. So let's say like a two to one. And this is something that we would use if we were doing like a double spread in the book. This is what we would use because if you cut it in half, each part would be on a page. Um, you can do a 16 by 9, which is a crop for something on YouTube. I can go one to one, which would be Instagram. So, but because there's so much information in this raw file, when I crop it down, I'm not really losing that much. So this is a pretty quick edit of another fireworks image. And let's click Y again to see the before and after. Big difference. These techniques apply to any fireworks. And if you don't have something to focus on, try to focus wherever you're, let's say you're shooting in a field or it's your local town's fireworks or wherever you are and there's going to be fireworks. You have to find something to focus on. You can set your lens to infinity, but I find I prefer to actually have the focus lock on something. So I'll try to find a spot on the ground or something, and then I'll turn off my focus so that it's nice and sharp. If you are shooting in the Magic Kingdom or anywhere where there's a structure near the fireworks, just focus on that, lock your focus. You can zoom in to make sure that it's nice and sharp, and then put it in manual focus so that the camera stays that way. And that's pretty much it with fireworks editing. I hope that helped you. Um, if you like the video, please click like. Um, if you want to get notifications about more videos like this, because we're going to be, you know, just keep cranking these out, uh, hopefully they're helpful to you guys, uh, just click the little bell for notifications. And if you like the channel, please subscribe to it. All right, we'll see you in the next one.